We did this last year and made a lot of people angry, so round two, anyone? Quite a lot has changed. New exclusives, better availability, new challengers on the horizon, but what is the best gaming console right now? To do this as unbiased as possible, the winner of the console war this year will be based on these specific categories, and they will earn points based on how they rank in each comparison. But some categories may just mean more to you than others. A solid indicator of a good console is the total quantity of units sold. It should be no surprise that with over 125 million units sold, the Nintendo Switch is the winner. But the PS5 isn't as far behind as you would think. And the Xbox is by far the worst. But this staggering lead from Nintendo may be for a few reasons. Most people don't have an Xbox and a PS5, but a lot of people have one of those and a Switch. So round one to Nintendo. The strength of these consoles definitely hasn't changed in the past year. That 720p Switch display still doesn't cut it. Yes, the OLED Switch's beautiful screen and 1080p when docked helps gives the illusion of better performance, but we're still on 6-year-old hardware and stuck with a dreadful 60Hz cap, which lags well behind every other console on this list. The Series X and the PS5 on the other hand are very close. Both console specs look almost identical. We say almost because the slightly higher clock CPU and the extra teraflops put the Series X just above the PS5. These system improvements won't make for a significant increase when it comes to performance, but towards the end of the console's life, this extra performance may be crucial. Which is why we'll have to give this one to Microsoft. Now for the most controversial topic, the gaming library. Xbox does have some great exclusives, but does not really come close to the titles on PlayStation. But most of the exclusives for PlayStation 5 and Xbox are also available to play on PC. Since Xbox is owned by the PC juggernaut called Microsoft, they have most of their games available on console and PC at the time of release. This is contrary to PlayStation, which tends to hold exclusive games for their console for an undetermined amount of time before they release it on PC. So it makes sense why PlayStation has such a good catalog of exclusive titles. Although, Nintendo is pretty much the staple of exclusives. If you want to be able to play any of these games, you need to own a Switch. Contrary to what we voted last year, Nintendo takes first place because more and more of Xbox and PlayStation exclusives are being introduced to the PC. PlayStation is in second place with their AAA powerhouses, and although we respect Microsoft for not making all their gaming studios titles exclusive, you're still last. Oh boy, controllers. The Switch controller is basically a fun size Wii remote. You didn't even mention the Pro the controller. The Xbox controller still uses AA The PS5 batteries. has insane stick drift. Relax. We will split up the basic controllers and their Pro variants. The Xbox controller has been pretty much the same for the last three generations. No fancy triggers or fancy touchpads like with the PS5, but it remains the cheapest out of the three consoles, hovering around $50. Whereas the PlayStation 5 controller usually goes for 70, and for some reason you can't buy a set of authentic Joy-Cons for any less than 80. Unless you want to buy something like this. Overall, durability will differ depending on how many times you try to rip the joysticks out with your teeth, but the Xbox controller is regarded to be pretty solid. Whereas the PS5 tends to have a cheaper feel, and the Joy-Cons lack any sort of good analog stick. I mean hey, stick drift happens on all three. But just look up Switch Joy-Con stick drift, it's a serious problem. So this will lead for a tie for second with no clear winner between Xbox and PS5 due to the better features on one but better durability on the other. But I'm sorry Nintendo fans, those Joy-Cons may split in half, but it's not a fun experience on anything besides Nintendo Sports. But with Nintendo's problem came a solution, the Pro Controller. If you ask Nintendo fans, this is better than both the Xbox and PlayStation standard controllers. I mean, you guys just love this thing. But it doesn't offer anything like trigger stops or additional paddle buttons like with the Xbox and the PlayStation Pro controllers. Both of these Pro controllers give you a premium feel and a competitive edge, but for $200 and $150, they're definitely a hard sell to casual gamers. So we'll give Nintendo their win here after their awful Joy-Cons and put the Xbox and PlayStation 5 tied in second, because well, one really isn't that much better than the other. Now it's about time we talked about all the other variants of each one of these consoles. Each one of them have one main variant, and no, the Switch Lite does not count. For PlayStation, we have the standard PS5 and the PS5 Digital. All that separates these two is a disk drive that somehow costs $100. On the Xbox side of things, we have the Series X and the Series S. Contrary to the PlayStation though, the cheaper Series S is weaker than the X while also not having a disk drive. However, it is worth noting that the difference in price is double the PlayStation, further justifying the weaker console. And finally, we have the Nintendo Switch OLED and its normal variant. The OLED has a much clearer screen and a smaller bezel. With the updated dock and kickstand, it's an overall improvement compared to the original. So for only a $50 markup, it's kind of a no-brainer. 
Overall, the best variant out of the bunch is the Xbox Series S. It does exactly what they intended it to do. It brings more customers in by lowering their price. Nintendo takes second, considering the price of all these improvements is a measly $50, and PlayStation takes third, for charging $100 for a disk drive. Accessories. To say it simply, Xbox doesn't really offer, well, any. Besides a bunch of colorful controllers and a few lackluster headsets. But I'll give them some props for their adaptive controller and seamless PC controller support. Which, um, makes sense. Nintendo does have a lot of accessories, like charging docks, cases, controller straps, charging packs, and retro controllers. But that's all extremely underwhelming when compared to PlayStation. They have the camera attachment, an updated media remote, virtual reality, and the Project Q handheld coming later this year. With the final category concluded, we have crowned the 2023 console war winner, and it is the Nintendo Switch. Let the civil discourse begin.